ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كلام الله عز وجل وخير الهد هد نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار As you all know there are a number of forms of worship that each and every individual of us may perform either by the actions he does or the by the rhetoric he says or by the things that go in his heart and, uh, and among the greatest forms of worship that we do with our hearts is what is known as at it is depending on Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah the Almighty says in the Quran, and to Allah belongs the ghaib, the unseen, of the heavens and the earth, and to Him return all affairs. So, worship Him and put your trust in Him. At tawakkul your belief is not complete without completing at tawakkul Allah the Almighty says, وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَتَوَكَّلُوا إِن كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ And put your trust in Allah if you are believers indeed. Which means that if you do not have full trust and reliance on Allah Azza wa Jal, then you are not a true believer. And the beautiful word we usually say, حَسْبُنَ اللَّهِ وَنِعْمَ الْوَكِيلِ a lot of us may say it without understanding the meaning of it, of it. A lot of us would say it when someone does wrong to you and you say, Hasbi Allah alik. And thinking that this is a supplication against someone else and it is not. It is the beautiful word that Ibrahim, peace be upon him, said when the pagans threw him in fire. It was narrated that Jibreel, the archangel, came to him and said, do you have anything? From me, do you want anything from me? And he's about to be thrown in this fire that burns everything dead or alive. And Ibrahim said, From you, I need nothing. All what I need is from Allah Azza wa Jal. And he said, When they threw him in the fire, Hasbi Allah wa Ni'ma al Wakil. And Allah Azza wa Jal instructed the thing that naturally would burn and kill to become cold. Not only that, and peaceful. Because if Allah Azza wa Jal said, become cold, he would have frozen to death. But Allah said, Kuni bardan wa salaman. Be cold, but at the same time, peaceful to Ibrahim. And he stayed there for a couple of days, and the people thought that he was gone forever. It's the same word that the Prophet wasallam said after the battle of Uhud, when 70 of his close companions were martyred, when he himself, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, was injured and one of his tooth broken and he was bleeding, someone came and said that the pagans thought that they did not do enough harm to you. They're coming back to annihilate the whole Muslim ummah. 
This did not throw any fear in his heart, nor in the hearts of his companions, because they had full reliance on Allah Azza wa Jal. What did they say? Hasbunallah wa ni'mal wakil. Allah alone is sufficient for us, and He is the best disposer of affairs. He is whom we have our full trust and reliance. This is what a true believer believes, not only say. And to have tawakkul, actually, you have to truthfully rely on Allah Azza wa Jal, on attaining the benefits and preventing the harm from reaching, reaching you, not only in this life, also on the day of judgment where it is needed most. Allah the Almighty says in the Quran, وَمَن يَتَّقِ اللَّهِ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا وَيَرْزُقْهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبْ وَمَن يَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ فَهُوَ حَسْبُهُ And whosoever fears Allah and keeps his duty to him, he will make a way for him to get out. Subhanallah. Any calamity you're in, any distress, any tribulation that you go through, Allah tells you, Allah promises you, if you have an autumn weight of belief in your heart, Allah tells you that He will make a way out for you. Not only that, He will provide Him from sources He never could imagine. You have your monthly allowance, you have your benefits, you have your salary, still you're in need, Allah will provide you from sources you could never had imagined. Not only that, Allah Almighty says, and whosoever puts his trust in Allah, then he will suffice him. Always in times of trouble, put your trust in Allah. Do what Allah wants you to do, and Allah will suffice you. Wallahi, no one on earth can cure your illness. No one on earth can pay off your debt. No one on earth can make you happy except Allah Azza wa Jal. Put your trust in Him and He has everything in His hands. And that is why some of the Salaf used to say, it has been decreed. Allah mandated upon Himself that whomsoever relies on Him, Allah would suffice Him. And whoever believes in Him, Allah would guide him. And whomsoever lends Allah, Subhanahu wa ta'ala, the ever rich. If you lend Allah, does Allah need you? Does what you have belong to you? It's Allah's. But Allah is asking you, Allah is telling you, if you lend Allah, if you pay for the means of charity, Allah the Almighty will make you rich. And whoever trusts Allah, Allah would save him. And whoever calls Allah, if you call Allah, don't call others, don't call awliya, don't call the Prophet in the middle of the night when everybody is asleep, raise your hands and say, Ya Allah, Wallahi, he will answer your call. You have to believe in him. And whenever you recite the Quran, and you will find a lot of verses encouraging us, instructing us to have tawakkul, on Allah Azza wa Jal. And also, if you go through the hadith of the Prophet you will find a lot of hadiths determining that this is one of the essence of our religion, to depend, to rely, to have tawakkul on Allah. The Prophet told his companions once that there will be 70,000, and I pray to Allah that He makes me and you among them. There will be 70,000 of the Ummah of the Prophet who will enter paradise without any accountability or punishment. So all what you have to do is be resurrected and you'll go to paradise. So the companions differed among themselves. Who are they? Are they the ones that were born in Islam? Are they the ones who were martyred? Are they this and that? And the Prophet came out again and heard them disputing and he said they are those who do not catch your eyes and this is a form of medication in Arabia maybe it's here when certain illnesses are difficult to be cured they bring a piece of metal and they heat it until it's red and then they put it on certain areas of the body and this is 
one of the forms of medication in Islam, but the Prophet does not recommend it, alayhi salatu wasalam, and he did not like it because it included forms of torture. But it is an approved way of medication. Yet, those who avoid this, though it's an illness, it has to be cured. But the Prophet says, among the 70,000, their characteristic is that they do not cut your eyes. And they do not ask others for ruqya. They don't go to people, to righteous people and say, give ruqya to me. Uh, I have a, a jinn, I'm possessed, I have an evil eye, I have black magic. Give ruqya to me because this shows that their reliance, though it's permissible, Yet the reliance is not on Allah, it's on that individual because I believe that he is the only one with the grace of Allah who can cure me and this is wrong. A true believer who relies on Allah does not go even that way. The Prophet also says, alayhi salatu wasalam, and those who do not believe in bad omens. So if I'm going to the university in the morning and there's a cab accident in front of me, I would not go back and say, today is a bad day. It's not my day, I'm not going. Something bad, something evil is going to happen to me. They do not believe in bad omens. The Prophet also concludes this and says, and they have their full trust in Allah Azza wa Jal. And how would we achieve this beautiful level of worshipping Allah Azza wa Jal and having our full trust on Him? You have to do two things. You have to connect your heart to Allah and you have to follow the steps that Allah had made permissible for you to do. So if you depend and rely on Allah without doing the necessary means, you are insane. If someone sits home and says, Oh Allah, grant me children, offspring of my own, and he's not married, and he's not doing the means to do so, he's insane. If he sits and says, Oh Allah, prepare a good meal for me, then he is insane unless he goes to the kitchen and cooks. Likewise, those who depend entirely on the means and neglect Allah. <coughs> so they say, no, I'm not going to ask Allah Azza wa to do anything for me. I'm not going to depend on Allah on anything. I'm going to do it myself. It is I who do things. This would be considered shirk and a form of blasphemy because you're not depending on Allah, you're depending on someone else and even if that person was you. Shaytan has managed to fool a number of the Muslims, groups of Muslims who depend, so they claim, on Allah Azza wa Jal. So you'll find them in masjids, not working, not being active, not benefiting themselves nor their communities. And whenever you tell them, brother, you have to work, you have to do something, say, no, no, I have a full trust in Allah. I, am, I have the tawakkul on Allah Azza wa Jal. And if I work, this means that I do not trust Allah Azza wa Jal. The Prophet said, alayhi salatu was salam, If you put your trust in Allah, in the true sense, He will grant you provisions. And how is that? He says, alayhi salatu was salam, As He grants to the birds who go out in the morning hungry and come back full. The birds don't have degrees in university. They don't have physical capability above us, yet they go out, they look for food, Allah grants them, they come back full. So in this hadith, the Prophet is telling us, if you want Allah to grant you, you have to have full trust and tawakkul on Allah. And this does not come without you going out of your home to work and to bring food and put it on the table. And this is why you will find always in the Quran and in the Sunnah a lot of examples on this. Depend on Allah, but you have to do some work. You know Maryam? Peace be upon her. The guardian of Maryam was Zakaria. Every time Zakaria would enter the mihrab, which is a place designated for worship in, in the old uh, uh, nations, every time he entered the mihrab to bring her food, he would find a lot of food that he did not bring and he was the only one allowed in. Maryam, where did you get this from? She said, from Allah Azza wa Jal. When she was healthy, when she was capable, when she was young, food came to her without her asking or doing anything. But when she got pregnant with Jesus, peace be upon him, when she was weak and vulnerable, 
Allah Azza wa Jal told, told her to shake the trunk of the palm tree so that dates would fall upon you and you would eat from it. Subhanallah. Now she's needy. Allah is telling her, telling her work. And if any one of you strong people would go and get hold of the trunk of a palm tree, if 10 of us try to shake it, it would not shake. Yet this pregnant poor woman, Allah tells her that, listen, you have to work. Though I can give you dates without you working. But this is to show us that Allah wants us to work. Likewise, Musa, peace be upon him, was fleeing Pharaoh and the enemies. He reaches the sea. If Allah wanted it, it would have split open and he would, could have walked. No, Allah tells him, strike it with your stick. Strike it with this pole you have in your hand. And subhanallah, it opens. If Allah wanted it, it could have happened without him doing this. All of this is to show us that we must do things in order to have full reliance and tawakkul on Allah Azza wa Jal. Our Prophet himself والسلام, on the Battle of Badr, 300 plus men against 1,000 fully armed men. It is not fair and they have no choice, no chance. Yet the Prophet takes والسلام, a handful of dust and he throws it in the face of the army and says, Shahati Wujuh. And Allah Azza wa Jal tells him in the Quran, it was not you who threw when you threw that, it is Allah who threw it. Allah Azza wa Jal could have blinded them with, with, with His grace without the Prophet throwing anything. Yet, Allah wants His Prophet والسلام, to have a say in it and to follow the proper means while having the full concentration and the full reliance and trust in Allah Azza wa Jal. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على عبده ورسوله الأمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. People nowadays and when I say people we should look into ourselves. Don't look at the one sitting next to you because Allah will only question you about your own deeds. So we have split it into a number of divisions. Some of the Muslims as stated earlier, depend on Allah Azza wa so they claim, without doing the necessary means that Allah instructed us to do. And this is not logical, and this is not part of the Sunnah. When the Prophet والسلام, was in an expedition once, half of the expedition were fasting, the other were not. So at the middle of the day, those who were fasting were completely exhausted. So those who did not fast, they're traveling. They're allowed not to fast. They started to serve them, to bring them uh, uh, their needs, uh, to erect the tents and so on. And the Prophet looked at them and said, والسلام, those who did not fast took all the reward. Because they are serving those who did. Which means that you have to do things in Islam in order for you to get rewarded. And on the opposite side, you find Muslims that do not rely on Allah Azza wa Jal. Some of them even refuses to supplicate to Allah. I have a business transaction tomorrow. I need Allah Azza wa Jal to help me complete it, yet I will not supplicate to Allah. Why? So I'm, I'm relying on myself. And most of the Muslims are like this. Most of the Muslims rely on their ability, not on Allah Azza wa Jal. So many times in business meetings, when I go, I find Muslim brothers, some of them practicing brothers, when they make a presentation, they say, when uh, I managed last year in the third quarter to achieve the target and I exceeded that and I did so, uh, so and so and my plans were so and so and he attributes all the success to his own knowledge and ability and this is part of the shirk. Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him, the cousin of the Prophet ﷺ, told us about a scenario when a person at night a burglar came to break in, but the duck, that bird that belongs to his neighbor, 
quacked. I don't know if the verb is right or not. But the bird quacked. So the burglar felt afraid and ran away. Ibn Abbas says, Whoever says in the morning, if it were not for the, my neighbor's duck, the burglar would have broke in, he committed shirk. Because he attributed this to the duck, rather than saying it's the grace of Allah, it's a blessing of Allah. Everything you enjoy at the moment, it is from Allah Azza wa Jal. Your health, your wealth, every single thing, every single favor and blessing, it is from Allah Azza wa Jal. If you attribute it to someone else, you are committing an act of shirk. Therefore, those who say, no, we depend on ourselves. We're not going to call Allah. We're not going to make any dua. We're not, we're not going to have any tawakkul. They are not proper Muslims. And unfortunately, a lot of us are like this. The Prophet himself, والسلام, when he fought, he had full trust and reliance on Allah. Is that true? Nobody doubts, doubts this. Yet, he fought in his armor. He didn't go without any shields or armor and said, I'm going to rely on Allah. Allah is going to protect me. When he migrated from Mecca to Medina, he didn't have any GPSs. He took a guide who was a mushrik to guide him to Medina. And he didn't say, no, I'm going to go, <laughs> inshallah, Allah will guide me. So this is the true tawakkul and trust in Allah, the Almighty. And this is what we lack most, our trust in Allah Azza wa Jal. Look at our lives. What do we focus most on? On things that are important, but they are not only Islam. We focus on growing the beard. And this is, of course, for the gents, not for the sisters. And the sisters focus on the hijab, and this is good. We focus on having short thoughts and not exceeding the ankles, and this is good because this is, saves you from hellfire, and that is it. And some of us, and the good ones of us, may focus entirely on prayer in the masjid and this is also part a great part of islam but is it only islam without relying on allah without tawakkul on allah azza wa jal everything would be in vain even if you pray if you have a long beard and you wear the hijab and everything mashallah looks perfect without the full reliance on allah azza wa jal without believing that allah is our creator and our provider Without believing that Allah is the giver of life and death. Without believing that Allah is al-bar al-nafi' the causer of harm and the bringer of benefit. No one can do this except Allah Azza wa Jal. Without believing that Allah is the honorer who honors people and is the humiliator who humiliates whom he wishes subhanahu wa ta'ala. Without believing that Allah is the one who brings people down and he is the one who exalts them when he wishes without believing that Allah is the giver and He's the constrictor, the one, the one that gives and the one that prevents subhanahu wa ta'ala, without this, you cannot be a true believing Muslim. Because once you have this, once you know Allah, once you believe in Him and trust Him, only then you would have performed the true and complete tawakkul on Allah Azza wa Jal. And this would cascade. This would show on your deeds. If you have full tawakkul on Allah, you will not find one single Muslim cheating in exams. Do Muslims cheat in exams? Big time. If you have full tawakkul on Allah, you would not find anyone lying to get benefits from the government. Do they do this? A lot. If you have full reliance and tawakkul on Allah Azza wa Jal, your, your heart would not be begging people for money. Your heart would not looking for a position in that company through that person. You would have full reliance on Allah. If it comes, it comes. And that is why Hatim al-Asam, he was asked, how do you have full tawakkul on Allah Azza wa Jal? He said, I only realized that my provision, that my rizq, no one else can share it with me. Is that true? Allah Azza wa Jal is the giver and the provider. Can anyone take something that Allah had written to me? No. So I went and rested because I know that only me can take what Allah Azza wa Jal has given and therefore nobody else can do this. If we have full reliance on Allah, you would not find Muslims, I don't know about here, I'm talking about Saudi Arabia, 
You will not find Muslims coming and knocking the doors of every sheikh or imam masjid asking him to give ruqya. Sheikh, my son is possessed. My wife has black magic. I have an evil eye. I was kicked off my job. Sheikh, Sheikh, Sheikh. Why don't you go to the source? Why don't you raise your hands in humility, in submissiveness, in showing and expressing your poverty to the King of the Kings, to the Lord of the Lords, Allahu al Musta'an. If you do this, Wallahi, Allah will answer you. But you have to go to Him. He promised us that if you go to Him, if you call Him, He will answer you. If you rely on Him, He would suffice you. Nowadays, we depend on our knowledge. You depend on your tongue and the power of convincing. You depend on your money. Someone else depends on his health or strength or position or nationality or origin or tribe. All of these will be in loss. The only true believer and the only successful among them all is the one who depends entirely on Allah the Almighty. I seek Allah's guidance and help that we all become among the mutawakkileen of Allah him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahumma grant us the, the true tawakkul of you and make our hearts connected with you. Allahumma grant us the halal means to have a successful life in this life and on the hereafter. Allahumma gfir lana wa rhamna wa afina wa afu anna wa tawallana bi riayatika wa la tahrimna. Allahumma atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirat hasana wa qina adab al-nar wa sallallahumma wa sallam wa barik ala nabiyya Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa aqim al-salat.